actually the hardest climb in Adelaide. Uh, officially, in my opinion, there's no climb that reaches this gradient and has this bad road surface. So here we can go, here you can see Dan is at the bottom of the climb. Uh, we averaged 370 for watts for five minutes, basically. Um, it was absolutely disgusting. Um, this, the official segment starts at the top of the hill, but Dan's created a new one, which starts basically here. It's called the Wild Heath. Um, it starts at the bottom. It's like a one kilometer segment uh, at 13 or 14 percent, but you'll see here the gradient's ridiculous. My speed is too fast. You'll see it, it zooms up to 30 k's now here. That's fake news. Um, it's not that much. But anyway, you can see it gets up to 400 already. We are fucking smashing it up. And just look at the gradient on the left-hand side of the screen, 15, 16, 17. It reaches 21 percent. So I'm on 36, 28, and I'd say that it's pretty optimal gearing. Maybe not for this bottom bit, because you, you could do a little bit easy gearing, but just because the cadence is a little low. But at the top, I think it's quite useful, because you keep a good um, a good sort of momentum. But you can see here, like, the road surface is already shocking. Potholes everywhere, like, literally everywhere. You sort of, it was like a cyclocross. It would almost be better on a cyclocross bike. Like, you're just so technical and whatever. But absolutely loved it. It was just so much fun. I was absolutely killing myself. I'd already done some threat like five by eight at like over three hundred watts um, at threshold, so that was pretty pretty intense. But like here I was, I was like Dan sort of pulled away from me because I did some dodged gear change up to twenty two percent for a bit there. Like oh my god, and this bit stays at well over twenty for a very long t stretch of time, and it's just brutal. You can see there's pretty open on the left hand side, so if you good tailwind from there, that would really help. But we had wind sort of coming a slight cross headwind, but luckily it was pretty protected, so it was it was all right. You can see here it's just brutal gradient. Like look at look at the potholes and like everything, and it only gets worse. So you can see here it's still twenty percent. Like this has been twenty percent for a very long time. My cadence is like fifty four, and I'm catching Dan. But I mean Dan's eighty six gears, so he's doing five to six hundred watts at this moment in time. And I think his average would be around five hundred watts, which is absolutely crazy. He's getting a power meter soon, guys. So when he gets a power meter, um, I think the internet will be broken because <laughs> some of the numbers he'll put out, people like. People will just go crazy. It's still 20, it's up to 21 now, but then it backs down a little bit and it starts to flatten off. There's some pretty friendly people here. They quite like enjoy the cyclists having a go. It's really gained popularity in the last couple of weeks. A lot more people have been trying out. So definitely if you're in Adelaide, you've got to try it out. It's pretty much up Akron's Hill and then take a left about three quarters of the way up and you'll see like a cattle grid, cattle grid, sorry. And then take a left down there, so small descent as you saw, and then into the to the steep stuff. So here it's getting down to 13%, which suddenly seems pretty uh, pretty manageable. And the gets canes go, go up, and it looks like Dan's pulled away from me, but in reality, the the time is probably the same. It's just because we're going fast, obviously the distance increases. So when you're going 10 k's an hour, it's really really does change it. I think my average speed for this was about 13 k's an hour on a 13% gradient, which is pretty insane, pretty nuts. Um, and we're up to 20 k's an hour on a 6% gradient. You can see the watts are really dropping. This is where my I really didn't. I should have really held like, oh, we're down to 290, like, come on. This is the problem with the climb. It's not the best in order to hold the absolute max five minute power, just because, in my opinion, it's it's just not really smooth enough. Like, if you're if you're experienced and like sort of a similar to, uh, with the power meter, uh, like similar to a pro rider or something, they could hold the watts really smooth on this bit, but I'm not that good um, at holding the watts really. Um, obviously, I have a lot less power than them as well, but I think it's more the smoothness of holding the watts, which I'm, I'm trying to work on, but you can see here we're doing all right watts. And the road surface here is still dreadful. Like, there are poles everywhere. Like, see how much, I mean, look how much the camera's moving in comparison to normal, just because I'm always dodging little potholes, potholes here. Where are we going to go, left or right? And this is where it really ramps up. And I just stayed in the same gears and just really tried to just, like, keep the momentum going. You can see there's some pretty cute horses on the right-hand side. There's a pretty cute foal just sort of looking around. <laughs> which is quite funny. Actually, it might be a Shetland, to be honest, but anyway, pretty beautiful. And you can see here now Dan's starting to go into a slightly too easy gear, gear now and sort of losing a bit of momentum. He's still doing decent power. And this is where it ramps up again, up to 20% on this some shocking gravel. Like, look at this road surface. It is dreadful. Like, there are potholes everywhere. And it only gets worse. Pretty much here, there's only one line. Like, I was feeling strong when I came up Dan's back wheel, about now. And I was like, all right, I'll probably be able to get past him because I could feel, like, you can feel the energy slowing down a little bit. And I was like, I'm not... I'm going a little less, and you'll see I get on his wheel now, and I'm like, all right, here we go. How can I pass down? And literally on the left, there's mad potholes. On the right, there's some gravel road with some pretty dodge potholes as well. There's pretty much only one line. Dan was like sort of zigzagging around, and it's like this is where it's technical, like a mountain bike trail. I was sort of following him here, and then he went left. I went left, but here he went to the right, and I think I kept going left, and this is where I lost some time because there's a big pothole, and I had to change lines onto the right-hand side of the road, and I definitely lost a bit of time there. But you can see here now that... I'm back onto Dan's wheel. I'm really like, oh, come on, come on, let's go. I promise I didn't know how long the climb was. 
I knew it's five minutes, but I didn't realize just around this corner is pretty much where it ends. So around here is where I think the first segment ends, but a little bit further on, just past these trees, uh, is where the last segment ends. And you see the watts here, only like 200 watts. It's like, go on, get it up, get it up. But I was just dying at this point. I'd already done had a quite a big ride, and Dan just sprints out the saddle, and pretty much here is where it's game over. So yeah, it was brutal climb. Worse than Woodlands, worse than pretty much any cherry bill. Worse than Kensington, worse than Osmond, like it was brutally horrible. Uh, road surf is shocking, so you really have to be on your game technically. Like, I know a lot of people have walked this climb, probably the top four haven't, but the top other six of them have. Um, so if you're in Adelaide, definitely check it out, give it a go. Don't be put off by the gravel. If you're going full gas, you can definitely make it up there. Just make sure that you have low enough gearing for you and you're confident on the technical stuff. But yeah, cheers for watching, and make sure you have a go at this segment, like 100%. I really want people to try it out, and I'll link it on the description below. See ya.